I sure will. A good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. A come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Today, uh, I, w- I want to just uh, share uh, something with you um, along your way um, to wherever it is you're trying to get to. You know, um, every, everybody has a different definition for success. And I'm not I'm not here to tell you what yours should be. I mean, please pursue whatever you think success is. Aim as high as you can, though. Uh, that's for sure. My father used to say all the time, I'm sure you all have heard it in different variations, but he used to always say, aim for the moon just in case you miss, you'll still be amongst the stars. He say that to me all the time. So that always was in me to aim high. Now, he wasn't saying aim with the intent to miss. He was just saying aim in case you miss you'll still be amongst the stars if you aim for the moon. But if you just aim for that first flow window and you miss it, you know, you usually run into some type of wall and, and nothing happens. You slither down. You know, in my book, uh, Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man, I told uh, people that men love three ways. They profess, they provide, they protect. And that's the core essence of a man's love. Well, there's some other P's in life, too. The number one thing you have to understand about trying to be successful, and I guess I'll call this the four P's. I may come up with five along the way. I don't know. I'm just talking as it's given to me. So I'm going to start by saying that these are the four P's of uh, success that you have to get ready for. Number one is pressure. A lot of it is applied by the circumstance of what you're trying to go for and what you're trying to do. But a lot of it also is self-imposed pressure. It's it's what you put on yourself to make it. It's it's a sense of urgency. It's, it's a sense of necessity. But pressure is the first thing I want you to be ready for. And pressure comes in a lot of different forms. But it's going to be pressure. There's an old saying that pressure busts a pipe. See, that's why most people turn around, because of the pressure of trying to be successful. I want you to get it in your mind that it is going to be a pressurized situation on your rise to the top. Pressure. But understand that that is what it is. It's not going to change. That's it. Prepare yourself. Get ready for there to be pressure. The second thing I want you to understand is when you receive this pressure, you have to persist. You got to stay at it. You got to develop a doggedness. (laughs) There's a, (laughs) there's a song out that says, why must I feel like that? Why must I chase the cat? Nothing but the dog in me. That's a funny line in that song because really I was thinking about it one day. I was humming it and, and, and it, and it occurred to me, said, why must I feel like that? Why must I chase the cat? Nothing but the dog in me. And you know, now you could take it in the literal sense that a cat chases the dog because it's innately it's in his spirit that cats and dogs are, a lot of times enemies. Now people have pets and have proven that if you show love on both sides, they can exist. And that happens too. But naturally, innately, when your cat goes by a dog and your dog don't recognize him, there's some barking going on. I'm talking about just walking through the neighborhood or something. So, but the reason that this dog is so persistent towards this cat is just cause it's in him. It's innately in him. And what I'm saying to you, just using that as an analogy, is that you got to be, you got to be persistent in that you got to develop some dog in you now because pressure takes some fighting back. See, if you don't fight back against pressure, pressure busts a pipe. So what you think it'll do to you? Pressure crack walls. Pressure causes explosions. So if you don't fight back to hold it in, 
You understand, pressure does most people in. The simple thing called pressure. The, the weight of what it feels like to want to be successful every single day, over and over and over and over and over. It's just too much pressure. People crack. You got to persist. You have to persist. You can, the thought of giving up can come, but you got to get it out. You got to persist. The next thing I want you to think about is another something that I've been thinking about for years and learned for years. It's called perseverance. To persist means to, to, to insist. The key word in insist and persist is insist. You must, you must insist that this is going to happen. Now the, the persist I'm assuming means it's a pro action. It's some type of pro action that you go towards it to make it, you know, persist. You got to be persistent. You got to be constantly at it. insisting that it happens. You got to be constantly at it. But the next thing I want you to remember is perseverance. Perseverance is important. Perseverance means that when you've done your best, when you've persisted, when you're fighting back against the pressure, perseverance simply means I'm going to hang in here. If if a crack come in the pipe, I'm going to hang in there. If the pipe bust, I'm going to keep going. If I got to put duct tape, mud, whatever I got to put on this thing, man, I'm going to use perseverance. I'm going to stay with it no matter what. So we looking at the three things again, you got to understand that it's going to be pressure that you're going to have to persist. Keyword in persist is insist. You have to insist that no matter what the pressure is, I'm going to stay with it. But then perseverance, if it goes wrong, man, you got to get in there and keep fighting. But then Lord have mercy. Nothing helps you handle the three P's better than the fourth P. You got to pray. You got to use prayer. You got to talk to God. You got to use faith. You got to have some conferences with him late at night, early in the morning, in the middle of the afternoon, when you're on the train, when you're driving. You got to talk to God, man. You got to get yourself some help along the way. Nothing is bigger than prayer. There is nothing bigger than prayer. Prayer will help you overcome the pressure. Prayer will help you stay persistent. And Lord have mercy, prayer will help you persevere. Them is the four Ps. God gave that to me. I'm passing it on. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. There's a ton of stuff they don't want you to know. Does the U.S. government really have alien technology? And what about the future of artificial intelligence, AI? What happens when computers learn to think? Could there be a serial killer in your town? From UFOs to psychic powers and government cover-ups, from unsolved crimes to the bleeding edge of science, history is riddled with unexplained events. We spent a decade applying critical thinking to some of the most bizarre phenomena in civilization and be Each week, we dive deep into unsolved mysteries, conspiracy theories, and actual conspiracies. You've heard about these things, but what's the full story? Listen to Stuff They Don't Want You to Know on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you find your favorite shows. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has arrived for the beginning of a new day, a new week, a new show. So ain't no need of holding it off because it is upon us as we speak. The time we are talking about is called right now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Harvey Morning Show about to pop off right now. Shirley Strawberry. Good morning, right now. Is that right? Yeah. I got it right. That's close. Right You're now. not going to get it right. You're too yeah, bougie. I got it. Junior. Right now. Morning. Carla Pharrell. Right now. How about that? <laughs> Nephew Tommy. Rit. R E T T. Rit. All right, now, Shirley, yeah. let's try it again. Okay, good morning, right now. I no. mean, okay. you drag One it out time. too. This is it. Try okay, it. let me think. This is, I feel oh, like Tommy with his W's right now. <laughs> good, mor- good morning, right what? now. 
Hi. Wow. <laughs> sure, they did. Hi. No G in it. It's no Hi. G. It's no G. Rat now. Like R A T, like rat. Yes. Okay, try oh, that. Okay. If that helps. Okay. That's yeah, that helps for. my mind. It does. Okay. Good morning, rat. Now. There you go. Took too big of a pause. <laughs> I mean, that's all you gonna. That's the best. You yeah, I think it is. Let me really on that one. Yeah, I let's try. You know, the bougie like person Shirley. on the show. Thank it's hard to work with bougie people. It really is. Man. <laughs> Whatever. Man. Man. I'm so glad God gave me the career He gave me because I would not have made it in corporate America. It just ain't no way. Man, I've been sitting up in the meetings, man. Because look, when I worked, for, I was sold insurance, man. We used to be in meetings. Oh, I yeah. just be sitting there, my head just be to the side. <laughs> Why? What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't care about this. <laughs> uh, we're going to go over the company results for the quarter. Uh-huh. It, it ain't my company. Uh-uh. <laughs> Dog, so, you so wasting when your you was time. Working in corporate, you was difficult then, too? Huh? Dog, it didn't, that didn't make no difference to me, man, what, what the company did for the quarter, man. Where's my damn check? I know. I, hate, I did hate meetings like that, though. Man, I, I sold this much insurance, man. Can I have my money? How, how much do I get? Yeah. <laughs> that's all you were that's all cared about. about. You're that's funny, all you Steve. To know. <laughs> man, I can't know how well the company doing. What my check, man? <laughs> he said, "Ain't my company." Sit a bit, and dog. This, this ain't even my life. Uh, is that when you turn the table over or something? Oh yeah, that's that wasn't what? gonna work. I had huh. sold. I had man. I had ordered a seventy-eight cutlass. Uh huh. <laughs> my commission was going. I was going to be able to get that cutness. Yeah. I went to the people's house three times. A lady said, this is great. I just want you to meet my husband. I explained that to this white dude. He said, yeah, that's great. We're not going to get it. (laughs) (laughs) I had bought the white steering wheel wrap (laughs) for my cutness. That's all I had to (laughs) move He said we're not going to get it and made me understood. I stood up at that kitchen table and turned that little table over. (laughs) I got to work the next day. Everybody was fired. looking at me when I walked in. Gone. <laughs> You're fired. Yeah. You, so fired. Aw, you had to give your cutlass back. Coming up <laughs> at 32 minutes after the hour, we'll hear from the nephew as he runs that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? <laughs> Pizza delivery. Can y'all deliver the pizza? Pizza delivery. Yeah. You know pizza. May I help you? Hello, I'm trying to order pizza. Okay, can you hold for me, please? Uh, yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Okay, sorry about that, sir. Can I take your order? Yeah, I need to order what? 10 pizzas. You want 10 pizzas? And what kind of crust was that going to be? I need six. Sir, can you talk up for me, please? I need six cheese pizzas. Six? Six cheese pizzas on thin crust. What kind of crust was that again? Thin. 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 Six pizzas. cheese thin crust pizzas. And do you want any other toppings on that, sir? No, I need uh two two meat lovers. What was that again? Can you, can you speak up a little bit? I'm really having a hard time hearing you. I need two meat lovers. Two meat lovers, is that? Yes, two meat lovers. Two meat lovers pizza. Okay, and what kind of crust would you like on that, sir? Uh, that's thick, thick crust. You said you want a thin crust on that? Thick. Sir, I'm having a really hard time hearing you. Can you speak up for me? I need, I need two meat lovers with thick crust. Thick crust. Okay, okay. All right, and then the last is two veggies on thin crust. Two veggies. 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 Two veggies. Two veggies on the thick crust. Do, y- do y'all deliver to um? Do y'all deliver to uh, um? Uh, gated gated community. Okay, can you hold for a second for me, please, sir? Okay. Sorry about that, sir. Okay. Can I get your phone number? Uh, three four two dash six eight nine. Okay. I heard three four two dash six. Eight, nine, but I didn't get the rest of those numbers. Can I get an area code or? No, my number three four two dash six eight nine. Okay, um, I need to get the whole seven digits and the area code so that we can put you in the computer to try to find your location. I told you my number. My number is three four two dash six eight nine. Okay, okay, sir. Um, let me get my manager on the phone. Excuse me, wait. 
um, is in the phone. Uh-huh. He's giving me like six numbers. I don't, and they talk that's, to me. That's fine. I'll, I'll take care of it. Sir, how are you doing? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. All right, I ordered ten pizzas, six cheese pizzas, two meat lovers, and two veggies. I'm trying to see if do y'all have a problem delivering to a gated community. Oh, not at all. We deliver to a gated community all the time. Let me just get a, a number for you and an address. Right. My number, 342-689. Sir, that's only six digits. We need seven digits. Well, actually, your Eric code plus your seven digits. Okay. I, I don't, I don't. If you just leave it with the guard, he'll make sure I get it. No, sir. I don't think you understand. I need to have a phone number where I can call you. We can go in and out of the gate. That's not a problem. When I get you, you there, I want to deliver directly to you. You can't go in and out that gate. Shh, listen. You can't go in and out that gate. Sir, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't hear you. Can you speak up some? Okay. I'm trying to get 10 pizzas delivered, and you just drop it off with the guard. Sir, I understand what you're saying. I'm trying to deliver the pizza to you directly. The guard is not who's getting the pizza, right? I'm delivering it. But he gon' he gon' he gonna pay you. I'm 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 cool with the guard. He gonna pay you. Okay, well, where are you where are you located? Let's do this. Where are you located? I'm in Angola. Angola? Angola. And where is Ang- where is Angola? Angola. You, y'all don't know where Angola I'm in Angola. Angola, Louisiana? The penitentiary. Huh? So we can't deliver pizza to Angola Penitentiary? Look, I ordered 10 pizzas from her. Six, six cheese pizzas, two meat lovers, and two veg. Look, I can't be on this phone too much longer. Listen, sir, I, I, I know what you're saying, but we're not delivering to Angola. Do you know where we're located? you got to call somebody. We're in Dallas. Look, you got to call somebody in Angola, Louisiana. Look, I'm trying to get these 10 pizzas. Look, I'm, lady, I'm not finna go back and forth with you. Exactly, and I'm not going to go back and forth with you either. We are unable to deliver this pizza to you, okay? Why? Because you are in the penitentiary, sir. No one delivers pizza to people in the penitentiary. People in the penitentiary can't order pizza? No, sir, they cannot. We do not deliver to the penitentiary. And then we're in Dallas. Do you know how long it would take to get pizza to Angola? I don't give a d- Let me see. Okay, who the manager there? I am the manager. You're speaking with the manager. What's your name? Never mind what my name is. Just know that I'm the manager. Okay, let me say this to you, since you're the manager there. If I don't get no pizzas here tonight, I'm when I get out in three years, I'm coming down there and I'm going to f*** you up. So who the f*** you think you're talking to? You ain't going to f*** me up. In three years, I won't be here. But matter of fact, I just might stay here for three years. So when you come back... Let me tell you something. If y'all don't bring these pieces to this penitentiary and get it to the guard before he get off work, then but it's going to be some around here. Now, I didn't order these 10 pizzas and everybody on the cell block is waiting on them. Sir, I don't, I don't care about you and your folk on your cell block. You are in the penitentiary, and I don't even know why you calling or you on my phone. This is a business, okay? And I have a job to do. I am not delivering pizzas to a penitentiary. So y'all discriminating about where y'all bring pizzas at? No, we don't discriminate, but we ain't located in Angola unless you're going to give me some Petrol for my metro, I ain't coming. Let me tell you something. I want you to remember these numbers. 342-689. If you see that spray painted on your house or that damn pizza place, then you know my then got out and I'm looking for your 342-689. I don't give a about 342-689 and 743. What I'm saying is your is grass if you come up here in three years. And guess what? Don't drop the soap. Who you think you talking to? That's what I said. Who you think you talking to? You better get off my phone. I got I got one more thing to tell you before I get out in three years. These are the last words I'm going to say to you. Hey, what's that? You listening? Yeah, I'm listening. Say what you got to say. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your girlfriend got me to pray phone call you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You got to be, you got to be freaking kidding me, man. Oh, my God. Oh, God, this is Nephew Tommy. <laughs> there you have it. People in the penitentiary should be able to get a pizza, too, okay? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. You know, DoorDash might have to go through three, four checkpoints, but, you know, you get your, you get your, you get your item at the end. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm just man. saying. Oh, what's wrong with that? Like, you act like the prison in the city. <laughs> like he's in the city. They go, that piece going to be so cold by the time he's in that picture. All right. Thank you, nephew. <laughs> Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time for Ask the CLO, the CLO, the Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey. Are you ready? What time? 
<laughs> All right. This one's from <laughs> Rashid in Lake Charles, Louisiana. He says, I've been married for six years and I think my wife reached her sexual peak or she might be cheating on me because she has really been frisky lately. She's invited, uh, she's initiated sex at the dinner table while we're watching TV with our kids and while we're in a drive through one day picking up food. My five-year-old son asked me why his mama squeezes my pee-pee so much and it's embarrassing. In front why of the boy? Why is she acting like this all of a sudden? <laughs> what is you complaining about, Doug? That's Air Man Dream. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Yeah, man, I've been married six years. What you, what you, why would you return the gift? Damn, somebody doing something for you and now you don't want it? I, I, don't, I don't understand that, dog. I don't think she's cheating on you at all. Mm. That's not how they act when they're cheating on your partner. Uh-huh. Mm, mm. She's trying to really? take it to the next level, yeah, how, how do I don't act? think I don't think that's how a woman would uh, act if she cheating on you. What's she squeezing on you for? She wouldn't change. Men change. Yeah. Women don't change. Tell that boy to look out that window and God, let her keep doing what she's doing. <laughs> you be quiet. Look out the window. <laughs> Women don't change, but surely he said all of a sudden this has picked up. Now, there mm-hmm. is a change. There is some sort of change. But that's not from cheating. Cheating, I mean, right. That's no. what I'm talking about. Yeah. I don't know why you're going there, dog. That's a negative approach. Seems like a blessing to me. <laughs> Stop wrapping your blessing in negativity. <laughs> you know, you're touching me, though. I'm touching you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the deal. It's a two-way that's street. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Put your ass right and play in the Happy Meal. <laughs> that's in the five-year-old That's all you gotta do. She all up here. These are bucket seats. <laughs> Man, we're gonna put a blanket across here in a minute. Yes. <laughs> all right. So don't look a gift horse in the mouth, basically, to the husband. Just let that go. <laughs> All right, uh, CLO Latrice in Kansas says, I'm a 27-year-old single female, and I've been doing online dating, but it's not working out. I sell high-end cars, so I meet a lot of great men and women, but it's just for a fling or we'll go to dinner. I recently had a customer that bought two cars from me, and we dated briefly. I stopped dating him when I met his wife and started hanging out with her. He got wind of the affair with his wife, so now he's blackmailing me to do a threesome with him and his wife. Uh, I think I should bow out of this gracefully and leave them both alone. Do you think he's bluffing or will he really tell what on is me? these people doing? Uh-huh. Wait, a <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Tell on you to who? I guess to her bosses at the car dealership. She sells high-end cars. So how is he going to break that news to them? <laughs> well, he's a customer, so. He must have got a better deal than what he's doing. I don't know. So, okay, 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 hold on. So what is he going to tell your boss? You were sleeping with him, and now you're sleeping with his wife? Uh-huh. Try to get her. I don't know her. why you say online dating ain't working out for you, because it seems like you're scoring all over the damn place. <laughs> I don't know how much more working out for you it could be. <laughs> what you, does she you, want? <laughs> you're dating and sleeping with everybody you sell cars to. Uh, and they high end cars at that, don't they? High, high end uh-huh. cars. Yeah. You know, what is wrong, lady? <laughs> She's got everything yeah. going Man. on. Yeah. Her She's end not. is high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's coming from somebody with a high end. Uh-huh. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> these, these punches too early in the morning now. These punches is too early. That boy hitting hard. <laughs> they too early now. I don't like oh, to get man. hit before the prank now. It's just a little too early. Oh, you got to warm up, Tommy. <laughs> I got to warm up to this. Oh, what do you God. think, Steve? Is he going to tell or is he bluffing? Hell no, he ain't going to tell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't bribe your way into a threesome. Let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Does his wife know that you and him was kicking it? Oh, she didn't mm. say. She did not say. See, mm. I did, he, he, he can't afford to open his damn mouth. Mm-hmm. No, nah, he can't. He bluffing. Mm-hmm. Trust yeah. me. That's a <laughs> He'll bluff He'll be taking move. a chance with yeah. that one, yeah. And the general All right. dealership ain't going to care. You know. <laughs> Just buy if you call my cars. job, you know, I'm going to call your job. Hello. Woo. Mm-hmm. All right. So, moving on. Terry in Brooklyn says, I'm a 32-year-old professional female, and I've been in a long-distance relationship for eight months. 
We both have a problem with the distance between us, but he expects me to move because he owns a home and I'm in a rental home. I told him that's not fair. It's also not fair that he hangs out with a female best friend while I'm not in town, but he never brings her around when I'm in town. He keeps asking me to move in with him so uh, he won't have to hang out with his friend. Does this sound right to you? Is this female friend my replacement while I'm away? Hmm. Well, if you come to town, he won't have to hang out with his best friend. Why does he have to hang out with the best friend? If you ain't here doing me, I need somebody doing me. Okay. Huh. Y'all go ahead and give it a try. It normally does not work out. You're going to wind up naked, though. I'm You're just I'm just up. saying. <laughs> yeah. You can go ahead and try it since you ain't going to listen to me. But uh-huh. it might not be in your best interest. That's all mm-hmm. I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So to answer her question, is this female friend her replacement while she's away is yes, then, huh, CLO? I mean, he Sounds just said, like, if you come yeah. to town, I won't have to see her no more. Yeah, That's mm-hmm. what he said, so I don't mm-hmm. know what to tell you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He spelled it out for mm-hmm. us. <laughs> mm-hmm. huh. so, she, so should she move then? Move? I, I don't, why are they talking about moving? They ain't in love. Well, th- he wants her to move because he owns his home and she just rents her. They not in love. <laughs> All this so moving move. in and you ain't got... A ring. You gonna move into his house, you ain't got that. no paper. You need, yeah. you need something uh-huh. with your name on it. All a right. marriage license What's or a name? deed. Yep. All right, CLO, thank you as always. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. There's a ton of stuff they don't want you to know. Does the U.S. government really have alien technology? And what about the future of artificial intelligence, AI? What happens when computers learn to think? Could there be a serial killer in your town? From UFOs to psychic powers and government cover-ups, from unsolved crimes to the bleeding edge of science, history is riddled with unexplained events. We've spent a decade applying critical thinking to some of the most bizarre phenomena in civilization and beyond. Each week, we dive deep into unsolved mysteries, conspiracy theories, and actual conspiracies. You've heard about these things, but what's the full story? Listen to Stuff They Don't Want You to Know on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you find your favorite shows. What's up, fam? I'm Brian Ford, artisan baker and host of the new podcast, Flaky Biscuit. On this podcast, I'm going to get to know my guests by cooking up their favorite nostalgic meal. It could be anything from Twinkies to mom's Thanksgiving dressing. Sometimes I might get it wrong. Sometimes I'll get it right. I'm so happy it's good because, man, if it wasn't, I'd be like, you know, Uh everybody not my mom. (laughs) (laughs) Either way, we will have a blast. You'll have access to every recipe so you can cook and bake alongside me as I talk to artists, musicians, and chefs about how this meal guided them to success. And these nostalgic meals, fam, they inspire one-of-a-kind conversations. When I baked this recipe, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Oh. Um, does this podcast come with a therapist? <laughs> <laughs> it can. <laughs> Listen to Flaky Biscuit every Tuesday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. So this is how to get your man to talk about his feelings. And Steve, please see if you agree with this. Guys, see if you agree with this. Um, because they're not known to do this. So ladies, if you're tired of guessing how your man feels, here's some pointers for you to get your guy to share. All right, Steve, let's see if you agree. Be trustworthy. How about that? For a guy to open Hell up... Hell no. <laughs> What? Oh, right, so we stop right there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't even oh, hardly wait, get I, it I'm up. I'm not understanding what you say. For if a guy you want to... your man to op- open up, what? Okay, yes. Okay, so if you want your guy to open up and share his emotions with you, he's got to be able to trust you. Okay? The he's woman. Gotta... That's yeah, what he's... it means, Tommy. Okay, I got you. Didn't yeah. ask you to be trusted. <laughs> yeah, you didn't even let me get it out, Tommy. <laughs> Anything with the word Once trust. Once I hear the word trust, trust I'm yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, treat him as an equal. Okay. So he, he's your partner. He's your husband. He's your man. You know, mm-hmm. he's your boo, whatever. So don't yeah, treat I mean, him like know, a child. I had that. Nah, I ain't had that before. What do you mean? Okay. You know, treat you like an equal. Uh-huh. 
What so happened before? No, I'm just saying. I ain't saying who it was. I'm just saying. We didn't say who. <laughs> you, yeah. You being treated spoke. equal now. I'm being yeah, treated I'm, like I a child now. Equal now, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've been. I've been. I've, I've actually been a slave. <laughs> <laughs> by really, your, Steve? By your woman? By <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if, if that's the game you're playing, that was that the game you were playing or something? You know how people roll, yeah. do roll, roll reversal? Uh huh. No, it wasn't no game. He was a slave. <laughs> It's no, I wasn't. No, it was not. Give no, me my was, shoes. What are you talking about? Roll reverse? No, no, no. You know no, how no. you role play no, with really your mate? Play. You role play. You whisper yeah. when you talk. Yeah, yeah. The whole time. talking low. The whole time. You ever had <laughs> never made eye contact? You ever been in such a bad relationship that they be sleep on your arm mm-hmm. in the morning, mm-hmm. and you have mm-hmm. a decision to make? Mm-hmm. Do I run the risk of pulling my arm out and waking her up, <laughs> or do I just chew it off? <laughs> That's your decision. Yeah. Coyote love. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't wake up. Let me up. tell you something, man. I, I damn near, I damn near had got it off, but I started crying. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. I, I had been bitten into my shoulder. That blood was everywhere. She woke up with blood all around in my mouth. She, what are you doing? I was chewing my arm. Trying to chew my arm. Wow. So, so, what you this, don't want to wake her up. so this wouldn't happen. Yeah. But she heard me whimpering. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Steve. <laughs> you doing, boy? Yeah. <laughs> what are you crying? Why is that blood on your mouth? I'm trying to eat my arm off. <laughs> your ass up, which obviously I didn't do. There's blood everywhere on these sheets. You didn't mess these sheets up. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I'm hey. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I'm just trying to leave your ass sleep is what I was trying to do. <laughs> My bad. Oh, God. Well, let me go on yeah. down to the hospital and get these 85 stitches put in my shoulder. Hey, come on back. I had to put a little bit of meat back on it. I had, I had most of the meat in my mouth, so they was <laughs> able to pack it back on and restructure my shoulder. Wow. Go ahead. What's All next, right. Uh, you know, like compliment when, him when he does something well. That's a good way to get him to that. open up. Like rem- yeah, like you know, compliment of the things he does well. You know, in case he's self conscious or something. You know, oh honey, I like the way you did this, or you know, yeah. whatever, whatever. That's you know, all you do. gonna do? <laughs> That's what you've heard. Yeah. That's what I get. That's what you get too, Tommy. <laughs> Who told you to put that on? <laughs> Told me one time, you got on four different blacks. Them blacks, right? That's four different blacks you got on. Them pants wow. gonna go with that jacket, that shirt. That's four different blacks. Yeah, well, that's ugly. That's the risk. Well, going away if that's what you want to do. Clean t-shirts around here. Where you going? <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah. you get, Jay. Jay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all of a sudden, you just gonna put on a clean t-shirt now? Out the blue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, change of behavior. Yeah. Now, some next yeah. All right. Uh, you got to pick the right time, okay? Don't start asking him about his feelings when he's rushed or when he's distracted ah. or watching a game and stuff like that. You got to ease into it, ladies. Mm-hmm. Ease Instead into of this it. right here. So you just going to sit there and ain't going to talk to me? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm watching the damn game. Oh, the game is more important more than important. me. Uh, yes, yes. Yes. Right now. Yes. Right now, it is. Really. Did you Before say Before you that go now? to work, we need to talk. Yeah. yeah. This game is pretty big. They're only going to play this once a year. <laughs> what did you say? Your did you actually tomorrow. say those words? Yeah. To you say? You don't say it out loud. <laughs> yeah. But you're getting say it. <laughs> so, here's another one. Watch your approach, how you approach it. Don't just push it down his throat, you know? Hello. Yeah, be That's gentle. Cool. Be non judgmental. You know, you want him to open up. You don't want him to run away from yep. the conversation. Because you sure don't want to put that down your throat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want it down your throat. Don't yeah. put it down our throat. Right, hello. <laughs> and watch your body language, ladies. We're just yeah. moving on. We're just moving on. <laughs> watch, do. yes, watch your body language. Watch you know, body language. yeah, keep yourself cool. Yeah. Keep your, you know, don't forget you're trying to make him feel safe and not judged. Okay, so you know, be cool about it. Oh, okay. You know, be Memories sexy with it. That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm learning you, something, Shirley. Uh, it's good. You got that one, Steve? You cool with that one? Watch your body language? Watch your body language. Uh-huh. Do you hear me talking to you? Yeah. Mm. Is that neck moving? Yeah. yeah. Turn all the uh-huh. way around. I hear everything mm-hmm. you're saying. You're sitting over there with your arms folded. 
<laughs> yeah, you got to be cool about it, ladies, if you want to get him to open up. You and, want him to open up, but you cross your lips. <laughs> And, and your arm fold. Hand fold, John. That's ugly. This is an ugly conversation. When they legs are crossed and arms fold. Yeah, that's that's oh, yeah. That's 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 you partner. <laughs> sure, these ain't good advices. If, if you want they a man are. open, come talk to me naked. I will be wide open as soon as you walk in the door talking to me naked. Can I talk to you for a minute? Hell yeah. What's up? What's up? Unless it's a game you really want. You pick now to be naked. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right now. Every time to be naked. <laughs> yeah. You You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now, guys, for a round of Would You Rather. This is the 4th of July cookout edition. Okay. So would you rather charcoal grill or gas grill? Oh, Wood. Come on. Yeah. Now, why not? Come on. Charcoal. I use I use lump charcoal, which is actually there you go. good. Uh huh. I don't. I've, I haven't used briskets in years. Why, why is she asking the cooking question? She why don't even know what we one? talking about, you, Tommy. You, you yeah. got an attitude, <laughs> Tommy. She don't even know what we talking about. Sounds so mean. Because I asked the would you rather Tommy, question. Tommy, she don't even know what she asked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I do. She trying to put out there. I know what confidence. charcoal is. <laughs> Charcoal right. or gas? How, what, how do you shut up? <laughs> <laughs> beef you ribs or pork ribs? Would you rather beef ribs or pork ribs? More uh, food, pork, pork Tommy. Ribs. Yeah. Pork ribs. Pork ribs. Yeah, pork sorry. ribs. And pork. And when you put it on open fire and you bar mm-hmm. and you uh, expose them to lump charcoal with uh, wood chips, is no longer pork anyway. It's just, what is, what is it? What is it? It becomes a new meat. It's called barbecue. <laughs> Not <laughs> say that all the time. It's a whole I'm new saying meat. B-O-B-B-Y, Bobby. like Bobby I'm Brown. T- Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, barbecue. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a whole new meat. It, it ain't even pork no more, I'm telling you. Oh, Because wow. I don't really care for pork at all. Uh-huh. But when I'm eating baby backs, I'm telling uh-huh. you, just, it go down just like beef. <laughs> All right. This is a Would You Rather 4th of July cookout edition. Uh, flats or drums when it comes to chicken wings? You like the flats or you like the drumsticks? Which one? Flats. You don't do that on the 4th. You cook the whole damn wing. You don't do. You don't break that up like that. See, you got two different... <laughs> you got your mad. holidays mixed you know, up. That's, that's Super Bowl you talking about with flats and drumette. This is the 4th. You cook the whole wing. I like wing. flats, period. Yeah, he is telling the truth, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he is. <laughs> I like flats. I don't care what holiday it is. Yeah, All right. Would you rather dry rub or lots of barbecue sauce? You don't need sauce. Because mm. Cause, yeah, cause my, my rub is off the chain. Now, uh-huh. Uh-huh. if you're going to do a sauce, Jen Ira, J-E-N-I-R-A dot com. Uh-huh. The hands down best barbecue sauce in the world in a bottle. Ginira.com right. barbecue sauce. Order the mild, the medium, and the hot. And Lord have mercy, prepare yourself for the best barbecue <laughs> you've ever had. I'm telling yeah, you right now. About to like get an up. endorsement. <laughs> it's better than Williams Brothers. And I thought that was better All right, than one last Baby one. Ray. One last one. Spades or dominoes? Spades or dominoes? Oh, either one. You can get hurt. Spades. Oh, you got to go spades because more, more, more black people play spades. When the ladies play more. But there's some lady dominoes now. There's some lady dominoes. Beat All your right. ass. Coming up next, more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Steve, uh, your boy J. Anthony Brown is here, and uh, I, I don't know if you knew this, but he has another new book out, and this one's called Signs That Tell You're About to Get Dumped. My man. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> come on, Well, Jay. Steve, I know. How many books have you written, Steve? Four. Yeah. Uh, three. But you've you already three. caught me. No, I'm, I'm trying to... You know, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I'm yeah. trying to catch up with you and, and write books, and, and the days I'm not here, I'm up writing. I'm writing. <laughs> I'm, I'm oh, writing. Oh, okay. Okay. When well, I'm not here, okay. I'm writing. So this new book <laughs> yeah. is called Signs You Might Be About to Get Dumped. Okay. Mm-hmm. Chapter one. This is a great chapter. She says she's going on a girl trip, uh-huh. but she ain't packing nothing but Victoria's Secrets and condoms. You know, she ain't got, you know, you, you need to look into that, okay? <laughs> Jay. Jay. She told you, she told you she needs to stay late with the kids 
and work with them with their homework at Starbucks. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, don't give me that. What's the name of your book again? <laughs> signs you about to get dumped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, okay. A I'm clear fine. sign. You over to the house. Uh, y'all chilling. You find a man's jacket at the house. It's eight sizes too big, but she says it's for you. <laughs> yeah, whatever. That's a big dude, though. That's a big dude and coming through. Yeah. <laughs> you about to get dumped. <laughs> you about to get dumped. She in the kitchen cooking ribs, chicken, turkey meat for her mama. Now you know damn well her mama's a vegetarian. What's up with that? <laughs> you know that. Come on, don't try to play me like that. <laughs> Do you see stupid written on my face? You about to get done, Martin. This is Jay's new book. Signs she of- tell you, she say, um, baby, I'm going to going to a baby shower, but it starts uh, at 11 o'clock at night, and uh, they what? asked us all to wear sequin dresses, So, <laughs> but I'll be I'll be back, so, all right, it starts at 11 at night. <laughs> Do I look like a fool to you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love his book. Look at me. Take a good look. Do I look stupid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she been out all day long. It's 11 o'clock at night. Here she come traipsing in 11, 11, 30, around quarter to 12. Trapes. You sitting there waiting. <laughs> traipsing in, right? And she smell like old Spike. Man, what's going on? <laughs> what's for your ass? Got some time on your head. Man. Yeah, he been thinking, right? Yeah. <laughs> Chapter <right>. 9. <laughs> Chapter nine. <laughs> He's a, I'm writing. I'm writing. Yeah. All of a sudden, y'all getting busy, right? And you see about four or five freak moves you ain't never seen before. You're like, whoa, whoa. Uh-huh. Where that, where, 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 You tell me something. What are you start doing that? Hanging off the ceiling fan and stuff like that. What, 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 what you doing that with? Where, where that comes from? <laughs> All right, y'all laying in bed, right? This this chapter. Mm. Let me see. This chapter. Oh, this chapter thirteen. This is a good chapter. You hear a ring <laughs> Chapter thirteen. Is, you hear a ring tone, and it goes mm. boom, 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 boom. That's the ring tone, right? <laughs> She just let it ring. Show you right. That's Jake from State Farm. Get out of here. What are you wearing, Jake? Oh, that's Jake from State Farm. <laughs> she, oh, it's, it's been four months, right? Uh-huh. You about to get done. Uh-huh. This is a book. This is a good book. Signs to tell when you about to get. It's been four months, and y'all ain't uh-huh. done nothing. She said, "You know, it's been four months. It's for four months. You must think I'm stupid. Don't nobody for four damn months. Get out of here. What? <laughs> Do I look stupid to what you? Are these mouth noises. <laughs> Oh, no. Raspberries and things. Book will be out shortly. <laughs> I'll tell you how to get done. All right, Jay, we can't wait to get it. Uh, <laughs> it'll be on the bestseller list, we're sure. Uh, coming up next to the nephew with today's prank phone call. Coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, he jumped in feet first. Woo, wait till you hear this letter. But right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? This right here, y'all, this is called uh, Jezebel Spirit. Uh huh. Jezebel Spirit. Take your time, cat dog. Let's go. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach uh, Sister Alicia. Thank you. All right, all right, all right. You may not know my voice, but I'm sure you probably know me if you saw me. But I'm I'm Brother Greg at the church. Okay, all right. How, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm sorry to, to disturb your evening. I wanted to reach out to you. The uh, you know the workers at the church. We we had a meeting. Uh, okay. A lot of the uh, deacons and the. Um, 
sisters at the church the uh, have come to uh, had a meeting and and I wanted to give you a call now Melanie Melanie that's 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 your sister right yeah that's my sister that's my baby sister okay all right well now we got a bit of a problem but uh uh, uh they, they felt that it would be best for for me to call you and discuss it with you and and let you know what the uh you know what they have agreed upon. I'm just basically the messenger, and I'm just calling you to give you the word of, of what's going on. Okay, um, brother Greg, right? Yeah, brother Greg, Greg, uh, Greg. Okay. No. Uh huh. Your wife is in the choir, right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Light skin. Okay, okay. I know you. I, I think I know you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um. Well, uh, like I said, Sister Alicia, what the officials of the church are saying is that they, they're saying that they have reason to believe that your sister has been having an affair with, with uh, Pastor Fred. and uh My sister? Uh, no. your, your sister Melanie. And they're saying she's having an, uh, had an affair with, uh, having an affair with, Past the f out now. I'm like I said, I'm just the messenger. Okay, so why are y'all calling me about something Melanie doing? Well, what does that have to do with me? The, 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 like, like I said, the officials had a meeting, and, and what they're saying is this is nothing but a, 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 a Jezebel spirit. And what they no, don't want to do. Bro, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. Now, now, now you're being rude now. Come on. And well, I'm not no, a problem, the sister. Oh, okay, I'm going to hear you out now. But you just hear me out now. They're they saying that this is a Jezebel spirit, and they would rather all of the f***ing family not be welcome at the church anymore. Okay. First of all, why are you delivering a message to me about my sister? If I have a problem with my sister, it seems like you would be calling my sister. Now, we two separate people, so why are you calling me about my sister, about a rumor, and now you're saying y'all don't want me in the church? Is that is that what you're saying, brother? They're, they're saying for people. the entire family. So if you got some brothers, sisters, aunties, they want, because evidently all of the ladies in the Thompson family must have some type of Jezebel spirit in them. No, no, wait, they no, don't, wait a minute. And they don't want now, that. Now, wait, 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 wait a minute now. You just, you, like I said, now, be, be mindful who you're speaking to, calling somebody a Jezebel. What you can't do is call somebody and accuse somebody and then call them a derogatory word, talking about somebody a Jezebel. And a Jezebel. Now you're being rude, sir. Well, it's, so it's, I, like it's, said, it's, I, it's a Jezebel I, spirit, is what they were saying. Okay, that you, okay. that's got to be the most asinine, foolish mess I have ever heard in my life. Who does that? Who are you to call me? Don't ask me no like that. You calling me all like some hood? Sh like who? Who the hell calls somebody like they got a Jezebel spirit? That's like calling somebody kid. Come on, you got a bad ass kid. Does your mama have a Jezebel spirit? Don't wait, 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 a wait a minute. I'm just, I'm, wait, wait a minute. Does your mama, does your red lipstick wear white out of Jezebel spirit? I'm, 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 I'm asking, asking you. you. And whoop your ass. That's what's going to happen. You're going to mess around and get your ass whooped and get drawn through the damn pool pit around with the top. Well, as of right now, the family can't come to the church. You think we want to be around a church that got people calling us asking me, how's your damn, do I have a Jezebel spirit? Who? So well, do, but but you of, never answered the question. Do you have one? I might have a Rahab spirit. Now, you know she was a good in the Bible. Now, I've been a member of this damn church for the last eight years. I don't pay plenty of time to this damn church. And if a pastor has a problem with me, you tell a pastor I have a problem with me. Sister really? Alicia. Sister Alicia. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> Let me say this, go and ahead. then I'm going to be yeah, through. Go ahead. First of all, before you say another damn word to me, you need to apologize and speak okay. to me like you got some just Okay. Can I say this? Go ahead. Go ahead. First I just want to. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I apologize because this okay. is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, and you just got pranked by your sister, Melanie. I'm going to kick y'all ass. <laughs> <laughs> I am not. That was a 
right? If I was, I was, I, that was a good one. Y'all yeah, got me. Ooh, I can't wait to talk to Melanie ass for that. Ooh, I, I, don't, I don't know who the lady is in the choir with the red lipstick on, but that, <laughs> I have no earthly idea. <laughs> all right, no Jezebel spirits, none of that. We all right? Maybe a, maybe a Rahab, like I said, maybe a Rahab, because, you know, there was more than one Bible, and she did good work for the kingdom, because, you know, I was good working for the kingdom. Now, I, 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 I said, now, wait a minute, I ain't been a in a long time now. Wait till you don't look too far. <laughs> now, oh, my God. Oh, God, I love church people. I love church people. Hey, let me ask you something. What is the baddest radio show in the land? It's the Steve Harvey morning show. Man, Come on. Too much. Did she say what I think she said? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, that's what she said. You gotta be long time. I ain't been one in a long time. Long time. <laughs> wow. Everybody has a past. You know? <laughs> My favorite Everybody line has a is your, does your mama have a Jezebel? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she went hard. Yes, yeah, she did, Steve. She uh, went hard. <laughs> all right. The nephew is coming to St. Louis, Missouri. St. Lou, get ready, get ready. That is July 7th, 8th, and 9th. The nephew is coming to town. Skip to the loo. I will be at the Helium Comedy Club. July 7th, 8th, 9th. St. Louis laying in the cut is Dothan, Alabama. July 15th, Dothan, Alabama. Tickets on sale right now. And then after that, I'm at the cap outside, Conclave, where you can catch me on the 22nd, which is Saturday, where I will be hosting uh, the family outing on the Walk. You don't want to miss it, baby. Tickets on sale right now. Go to CapricornClave2023.com. That's CapricornClave2023.com. And guess what's almost sold out? Uh-oh, that nephew, uh-oh, on the 23rd in Redondo Beach, California. We getting there. We almost there. Got a few tickets left. I'm proud of y'all, uh, L.A. and everybody around the way. Y'all must miss the nephew because I miss y'all too. But I looked at the tickets and said, oh my God, I think they love the nephew. So, few <laughs> tickets left. Redondo Beach, California at Redondo Performing Arts Center. The nephew is coming on Sunday night, the 23rd. Tickets on sale right now. Well, thank you, Tommy. Strawberry Letter up next. He jumped in feet first. We'll get into it right after this you're listening to the steve harvey morning show there's a ton of stuff they don't want you to know does the u.s government really have alien technology and what about the future of artificial intelligence ai what happens when computers learn to think could there be a serial killer in your town from ufos to psychic powers and government cover-ups from unsolved crimes to the bleeding edge of science History is riddled with unexplained events. We spent a decade applying critical thinking to some of the most bizarre phenomena in civilization and beyond. Each week, we dive deep into unsolved mysteries, conspiracy theories, and actual conspiracies. You've heard about these things, but what's the full story? Listen to Stuff They Don't Want You to Know on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you find your favorite shows. What's up, fam? I'm Brian Ford, artisan baker and host of the new podcast, Flaky Biscuit. On this podcast, I'm going to get to know my guests by cooking up their favorite nostalgic meal. It could be anything from Twinkies to mom's Thanksgiving dressing. Sometimes I might get it wrong. Sometimes I'll get it right. I'm so happy it's good because, man, if it wasn't, I'd be like, you know, uh-huh. everybody not my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, we will have a blast You'll have access to every recipe so you can cook and bake alongside me as I talk to artists, musicians, and chefs about how this meal guided them to success. And these nostalgic meals, fam, they inspire one-of-a-kind conversations. When I baked this recipe, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Oh. Um, does this podcast come with a therapist? <laughs> <laughs> it can. <laughs> Listen to Flaky Biscuit every Tuesday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And listen, if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, Strawberry Letter. 
Thank you, nephew. Subject, he jumped in feet first. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 28-year-old woman, and I've been having bad luck on the dating scene. Finally, I met someone, and I thought he was great. Emotionally, he fulfilled my needs, and he planned the best date. We formed a bond over the fact that we were both tired of dating and being disappointed. After dating for a couple of months, we decided to take things to the next level, and we had sex. It was amazing at first. Then he stopped right in the middle of the act and asked me to put my stiletto heels back on. I did it and thought it was something new and fun. But as we continued to do the do, he focused more on my feet and my shoes than he did on other essential parts of my body. The next time we were intimate, he asked me to take off my socks and then he grabbed my foot and interlocked his fingers between my toes. The third time we were intimate, he grabbed my foot and smacked himself across the face with it. (laughs) Now, that freaked me out. And I've never been so mortified. But I didn't say anything. I decided to take a break from us having sex. And it was fine with him because I soon figured out it was my feet that got him aroused, not me. Recently, we were chilling and watching TV and he took off my he took my socks off and started licking the bottom of my feet. <laughs> I tried to pull away, but he had a vice grip hold on, and I could see that he was very <laughs> aroused. It was time to have the conversation about his foot fetish. He admitted that he was very attracted to me when we first met, primarily because of my feet and the white toenail polish. I told him he was weird and he said he'd get back in counseling if I promised not to break up with him. (laughs) Foot (laughs) counseling? What? Should I give him a chance to change or break up with him? I I don't know about this guy. Uh, You said it. uh, It's weird. And uh, it is a foot fetish. And I guess the foot fetish is like the most common of all the fetishes out there. Uh, What he's doing does sound freaky and a little bit crazy, especially the part about him having a vice (laughs) grip on your toes and uh, you're not being able to get away. Uh, That was, you know, kind of weird. But I guess it all depends on on what you're used to, or in this case, what you're not used to. And guess what? It is okay to feel the way you feel. If you don't like something or if something is uncomfortable for you and to you, then uh, you got to tell him. I mean, you got to let him know what you don't like and that you don't like this and to stop it immediately because it's freaking you out. That's how you explained it to us in the letter. And and I'm sure he's heard this before because he you said he's been in counseling. So it was no surprise to him that that you know he it was a bit much for you. It was no surprise he would he would get back into counseling um, if you promise not to break up with him. So you know you got to decide: is this too much for you? Is this too freaky for you? It sounds like it is. It doesn't sound like you like it very much, and it does sound like he's locked in on your feet, and um, and it doesn't sound like you're interested in that. So if you need to break up with him. I mean, that's what you got to do because it can only get worse from this point. I mean, there's no telling what might happen the next time, you know, you guys are intimate. So maybe you need to stop while you're behind, while you're ahead, because you, you never know what, what might happen with this freaky guy. Steve. Well, put your foot in. to me, <laughs> Did I put my it foot seems in it? like this is a progressive thing. Yeah. And I'll tell you what I mean by this. You know, you're 28. You finally met a man. Both of y'all said y'all was tired of dating and wanted to find something real. After y'all dated for two months, everything was going straight. Y'all decided to go to the next level. Okay, now here where we changed. We had sex. It was amazing at first. Then he stopped right in the middle of the act, asked me to put on my stiletto, put my stiletto heels back on. I did it, thought it was something new and fun. I ain't got no problem with that. I like stiletto. I like toe pointing. I like all that. Heels up, mm-hmm. ankle holding, all that. <laughs> all that. You like 
it's careful, it's, it's careful. progressive. <laughs> now, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I've been working through some things with y'all. Yeah. <laughs> so you put the heels so back on, it was good. <laughs> I wouldn't have let you take them off. Let's just start right there. You wouldn't have had to go get them back on. Because I'd have stopped you from taking them off. That's I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. It's levels to this. Mm-hmm. And then he focused more on uh, your feet and your shoes than the rest of your body. Okay, that's what you said. The next time we was intimate, now this one, he asked me to take off my socks. He grabbed my foot. He interlocked his fingers between my toes. Now, wait a damn minute now. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Well, if you saying. jam your big ass hands down between each one of my toes, let me explain something to you. My toes has never been apart before, ever. <laughs> ever. They friends. They are packaged. Yeah, my toes are always touching at all times. A lady grabbed my big toe one time, giving me a pedicure, uh, and put her hand, her whole hand, <laughs> on my big toe and separated it from the other foe. <laughs> I couldn't. I was hyperventilating. I couldn't even breathe. I, <laughs> <laughs> So you once so you crazy. interlock your fingers in between my damn toes and you got big ass hands, we gonna break up about this. <laughs> Hold up, Steve. Hold up, okay? You're we'll not have part two. your fingers between my damn toes. <laughs> we'll have part two of Steve's response coming up at uh, 23 minutes after the hour. The subject, he jumped in feet first. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, come on. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter subject. He jumped in feet first. first. Well, this lady that met this man, they finally started dating. They both decided they needed something real. He was amazing. Amazing dates and everything. After two months, they decided to go to the next level. They're having sex. And in the middle of it, he stopped and asked her to put these stilettos on. Once again, nobody got no problem with that. That's fun. You know, I like all that, too. You know, so anyway, they get on and that. But she noticed she started paying more attention to the shoes and her feet than the rest of her body parts. There ain't no problem. So they went on and had sex again because sex was amazing, she said. You know. Then they did it again. Mm-hmm. She thought it was new and fun. And then he, he uh, the next time we were intimate, he asked me to take off my socks. Now, why he had to ask you to take your damn socks off is beyond me. Don't nobody want to make love with your socks on. That ain't cute. Oh, okay. So now Don't he got worried. to ask you to take your socks off. Don't be country now. Take your damn socks. Y'all ain't in the barn nowhere. Y'all ain't out in the field. She didn't want you to. in the house. Take your damn socks off. <laughs> she was scared. <laughs> but when she did take them socks off, this damn fool grabbed her foot yeah. and interlocked his fingers between her toes. What? <laughs> Exactly. Boy, do you know what the hell would have happened if you do that to me? Because like I said, my feet is a buddy package. They friends. They've never really been separated. They've been in gators before. They Even my sandals, my feet still touch. There's no point where I don't care if I'm jumping where all my toes spread out and look like a hand. My feet always look like feet. They don't ever open up. They don't have the ability to grab stuff, pick up quarters and stuff off the ground. These ain't monkey feet. I can't hang from a tree by my foot. None of that. I can't write with my foot. You know, people can write with their feet. I can't do that. Uh All right. And that kind of hurts you. The third time we was intimate. Now, here's another one that's a little shocking. He grabbed my foot. And he smacked himself across the face with it. That freaked me out. Oh, that would have freaked me out, too. But I bet he wouldn't Uh, grab it no more. I'd have kicked his ass so hard with my foot (laughs) in his face, I'd have dislocated his damn jaw. I bet you won't grab my big ass. I wasn't 13. If you slap myself, if you slap yourself with this foot I got, you're going to knock your monkey ass out. (laughs) It's not about you. you Take this big ass 13 and run across your face. I'm going to put your ass to sleep. That's what you should have did. You should have, if you got tired of it and freaked you out, you should have said, oh, and just pump, just kicked him dead in the jaw. <laughs> and you've never been so mortified, but I didn't say anything. I decided to take a break from having sex with this guy because I figured I was my feet that was more aroused. Me. Well, they was chilling and watching TV. He took my socks off and started licking the bottom of my feet. Ew. I'd have seen some fine women in my day. I've never met nobody. Come on, say so it. So damn fine. 
Well, I'm wanted just to. licking the bottom. <laughs> 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 You'd have walked in there to the bathroom and came back in here. I'll be damned <laughs> if I sit up here and run the risk of getting pine saw and Lysol all over oh, my damn. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Got a little tidy bowl on the bottom of your foot. Ew. So now I'm tripping. Then you tried to pull away, but he had a vice grip hold, and I could see that he was very aroused. Now, this is crazy now. He done grabbed your foot so hard you couldn't jerk away from it. Oh, this dude got damn problem. Yeah. And he aroused. Now, he's standing down with your foot in his hand. It's just a lot going on. <laughs> Stay away from that, Steve. Yes. <laughs> it was time we had a conversation about his foot fetish. He admitted that he was very attracted to me when we first met, primarily because of my feet and white toenail polish. Need to switch that to black immediately. <laughs> I told him... <laughs> For real, switch it right back. She, she needs to do what, Steve? I'm back. Switch that white polish to black immediately. You look like something maybe, on your foot? Yeah, maybe it might have a different reaction or something right here. You got to get that white off your feet. Immediately. Because he licking the bottom of your toes and everything, y'all. Y'all know you thought that French manicure was cute, but you got to kill that. <laughs> you got to go with Jezebel Red or something. You got to go with Floozy Pink or something. I don't know what you're going to do, but you got to try something. We got to get this white off. <laughs> I told him he was weird, and he said he'd get back in counseling if I promised not to break up. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're going to get back in counseling. Mm. So now your ignorant ass didn't been to counseling because this has been a problem before. <laughs> you done scared one of them women so bad she done had your ass committed. Yeah. So you done already been to counseling? Lady, listen to me. If he can go to counseling and fix his problem, you might have a good relationship. <laughs> but I... You've been there before? That, I don't know what you need to do. I, you, it's, I don't know what if you need to remove your toenails. I don't know what you're going to have to do. I don't know what you got to do to make them start making them look like they ain't feet or something. You know, you so make them look put like some hands. rings on your toes. Make them look like a hand. You know, put some chains around your foot. Put some, put some, put some chains around your foot. Make it look like a neck. <laughs> you got to throw his ass off some kind of way. Because he see them damn feet, he lose his rabbit ass mind. <laughs> Ignorant show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Introduce your friend. Ladies and gentlemen, that damn J. Anthony Brown. I think what we're about to do now will answer a lot of questions that people have. They have questions. This oh. will answer those questions that people have from that questions. About that what? Hit it. Dave. The song is to answer the question that everybody's been asking and we will answer the question that most people have been asking here's the answer thank you very much jay anthony good morning everybody here we go some have asked the question some folks have asked the question why do we cuss they'd like to know why you cuss we cuss because we're fed up we cuss because it's fed up and we and they've enough. had enough. Come on now. We cuss when we are happy. We'll cuss at times of happiness. We cuss when we are sad. And we will cuss at times of sadness. Some got it from their mothers. Some people got it from the mothers. Some got it from their dads. And others got it from their dads. Come on now. Nicer you can't use nicer words. Can sometimes be real tough. It'll be real rough to get them words out. But nothing takes the nothing place. Nothing takes the place. Like me, shut the F Could up. you please shut the F up? Sometimes you want to tell place. church members, could you just please, please, like just F shut up. the F up? And now you have. Now you have the answer. Now you have it. That is the reason why we cuss. 
Don't tell me how to run the church. I'm the pastor up in here. Always popping off at the mouth. Could you just shut the earth up? Deacon, don't try to tell me what to do. <laughs> you are out of your mind. You're so ignorant. Don't tell that me was, what to do. This is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> the it's worst been, hire you've ever it's hired. Great. It's great. It's great. I'm so happy I'm here. Don't even try. Just because the way your up. mind works, Jay. <laughs> so you're going to use that song, huh? From that yeah, artist, yeah. huh? Well, it answers the question, the reason why we cussed. It's, it's right there. I mean, <laughs> I was wondering what question you were talking about when you said it. <laughs> what question? What are you talking about? The reason why we cuss, yes. But we do. That's it. It answers, yeah. Yeah. That, that's going to probably end up viral somewhere. <laughs> that's going to end up viral somewhere. I don't oh, know. yeah. <laughs> but you know what? The only thing I was worried about, did somebody else do it before me? And I'm like, nobody touched that. That song is right there. I mean, damn. What? <laughs> that's what you were worried about? Uh, exactly, yeah, right? Somebody doing it before me, right? right. All right. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jay, I think. Um, You're quite welcome. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. There's a ton of stuff they don't want you to know. Does the U.S. government really have alien technology? And what about the future of artificial intelligence, AI? What happens when computers learn to think? Could there be a serial killer in your town? From UFOs to psychic powers and government cover-ups, from unsolved crimes to the bleeding edge of science, history is riddled with unexplained events. We've spent a decade applying critical thinking to some of the most bizarre phenomena in civilization and beyond. Each week, we dive deep into unsolved mysteries, conspiracy theories, and actual conspiracies. You've heard about these things, but what's the full story? Listen to Stuff They Don't Want You to Know on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you find your favorite shows. What's up, fam? I'm Brian Ford, artisan baker and host of the new podcast, Flaky Biscuit. On this podcast, I'm going to get to know my guests by cooking up their favorite nostalgic meal. It could be anything from Twinkies to mom's Thanksgiving dressing. Sometimes I might get it wrong. Sometimes I'll get it right. I'm so happy it's good because, man, if it wasn't, I'd be like, you know, uh -huh. everybody not my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, we will have a blast. You'll have access to every recipe so you can cook and bake alongside me as I talk to artists, musicians, and chefs about how this meal guided them to success. And these nostalgic meals, fam, they inspire one-of-a-kind conversations. When I baked this recipe, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Oh. Um, does this podcast come with a therapist? <laughs> <laughs> it can. <laughs> Listen to Flaky Biscuit every Tuesday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, guys, it's time for Comedy Roulette. Steve Jr., <laughs> J. Anthony the wall, Brown, though. Tommy, Shoot. of course. Uh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> let me let you know what today's categories are. Whoa. Well, that's why we have four comedians on the what? show, right? This what y'all want? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is what you guys do. All right, we're ready. <laughs> you ready to spin the wheel? Spin it, spin it, spin it. You have okay, to say the, the topics are. That's right, I haven't done this in a long time. All right, here go the You're topics. Right, hey. Here go the topics. Things people say when they want to see the doctor. <laughs> Things people say who can't hook up to the Zoom meeting. <laughs> and the last one, thing stepdads say to kids when the mom leaves the room. Ooh. Oh, oh, yeah. That's oh right. now we spin the wheel. Zoom. Zoom. The zoom is good, huh? Uh, uh, uh. Oh, man. Ah, I wanted to zoom, too. All right. Is, it stopped on things right. stepdad say to kids when the mom leaves the room. All right. Oh, That'd be good. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Who's first? Uh -huh. Who's first? Me? Yes. Yeah, you're usually first. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, I'll start it out. Here we go. Uh, look at him, boy. 
I will cut the head off every toy you got in that damn room. You go ahead. Keep on. Keep on. Okay? Keep on. I will cut the heads clean off. <laughs> Say it again. Say it again. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Go. <laughs> Think step dad say the kids when the mom leave the room. All right, baby. I'll see you later. All right, now have a good one. All right. Don't look at me. <laughs> ever, Don't look ever, at me. ever, ever. Don't look at me. What you looking at? <laughs> All right. Things, <laughs> stepdaddy. Things, stepdaddy say when uh, when the mother leaves the room. You look just like your ugly ass dad. Tommy, I do that. Yeah. Go ahead, Steve. Come on, Steve. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Now pull, pull your lips in your mouth. Pull them in. Pull them in. Now look at that. That's what you're gonna look like without your lips if you say something else in here. <laughs> Just for you so calm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Things stepdad say to kids when the mom leaves the room. Uh huh. How would you like to live a life without thumbs? Cause I can make it happen. Okay. I can make it happen. okay? Keep on. Like <laughs> come here, come here, come here. Bring your little, come here. Hold your breath till your mama come back. <laughs> She's saying the thing you tell her. I'm happy you with your lungs. You hear me? Hold your breath. <laughs> Evil. That's so mean. I know. Things, things, things. Look here. This really just about me and your mama. <laughs> you ain't got a damn thing to do with this. What are you saying? <laughs> this is really just about me and your mother. That's what they say. You ain't got a damn thing to do with this. <laughs> All right, okay. Come on, Jason. Things stepdad say when the mom hmm. leaves the room. Hmm. Boy, let me tell you something. I will bite you in your sleep and you won't know who did it, okay? That's what, what? I mean. Yeah. You, you'll have no idea who bit you, okay? Go ahead. <laughs> Things, things stepdad say to kid when they leave mom in the room. All right, baby, bye. See you later. I love you. Give me that damn remote. We ain't watching no damn spam SpongeBob SquarePants all day. Yeah. <laughs> damn football game. Game on. Come here. Come here. Come here. Look at me like that again. I promise you, I will FedEx your ass to your bad house. You hear me? I will mail you. I ain't laughing. <laughs> Last one. Last one. Last one. Last one. Last one. Yeah. yeah. I know I, I, I hey, keep saying I ain't your real daddy. I know I ain't your real daddy, but let me ask you a question. Where is this punk ass at, though? <laughs> <laughs> have you seen him? Coming up, thank you guys for today's Comedy Roulette. Coming up more of today's trending stories on the Steve Harvey Morning Show at 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Listen up, Steve Harvey Nation. The legendary funk group Cool and the Gang returns to the stage at Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino with their residency, and you could win a trip for two to see them perform, including round-trip coach airfare, a two-night hotel stay. The Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino with its newly designed rooms is the home of legendary Vegas fun. Enter now and get rules for a trip to Vegas to see Cool and the gang at steveharveyfm.com. That's steveharveyfm.com. It is sponsored by Westgate Resorts. All right, now. Well, I tell you what. We outside, baby. Vegas Uh is back. We (laughs) Hollywood swinging. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool and the gang. Mm -hmm. Ladies night. Summer Madness. Yeah. Celebration. Night. Celebration. <laughs> yes. They I had the that. best curls, man. All of them. They could, <laughs> JT. All of them. JT. JT was all strong with it, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is this is gonna be a great show too. Steve. HarveyFM.com. It is sponsored by Westgate Resorts. If you're looking for fun in the summertime, being outside, this is it. This is a show for you. It really, really is. If you still have a curl, you should not be missing this show. You should really be at this show. (laughs) This is for you. You You see those curls, don't you? (laughs) 
<laughs> All right, we'll have more of the oh, Steve man. Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after the hour. We will play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now, guys, for a round of Would You Rather. This is the 4th of July cookout edition, okay? So would you rather charcoal, grill, or gas grill? Oh, wood. Come on. Yeah. Now I want to. Come on. Char- I use I use lump charcoal, which is actually there you go. wood. Uh-huh. I don't I've, I haven't used briskets in years. Why, why is she asking the cooking question? She why don't even know what we talking about, you, Tommy. You yeah. got attitude. Tommy, she don't even know what we talking about. That's so mean. Because I asked the would you rather Tommy, question. Tommy, she don't even know what she asked. <laughs> yeah. That's the wrong question. I do. She's trying to put out that what charcoal is. is. Charcoal right. Right. or gas? How, what, how do you shut get up? <laughs> beef <laughs> ribs or pork ribs? Would you rather beef ribs or pork ribs? More pork, food, pork, pork Tommy. Ribs. Yeah. Pork ribs. Pork ribs. Yeah, pork sorry. ribs. And pork. And when you put it on open fire and you bar mm-hmm. and you uh expose them to lump charcoal with uh wood chips, is no longer pork anyway. It's just, what is, what is it? What is it? It becomes a new meat. It's called barbecue. <laughs> Not <laughs> say that all the time. Bobby. 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 Like Bobby Brown. Bobby, Bobby. Brown. Bobby. B-O-B-B-Y. <laughs> barbecue. Mm-hmm. It's a whole new meat. It, it ain't even pork no more, I'm telling you. Oh, Because wow. I don't really care for pork at all. Uh-huh. But when I'm eating baby backs, I'm telling uh-huh. you, just, it go down just like beef. <laughs> All right. This is the Would You Rather 4th of July cookout edition. Uh, flats or drums when it comes to chicken wings? You like the flats or you like the drumstick? Which one? Flats. You don't do that on the 4th. You cook the whole damn wing. You don't do. You don't break that up like that. See, you got two different... <laughs> you got your mad. holidays mixed you know, up. You know, that's, that's Super Bowl you talking about with flats and drum in. This <laughs> is the 4th. You cook the whole wing. I like wing. flats. Period. Yeah, he is telling the truth. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he is. <laughs> I like flats. I don't care what holiday it is. Yeah, All right. Would you rather dry rub or lots of barbecue sauce? You don't need sauce. Because mm. yeah, my, my rub is off the chain. Now, uh-huh. Uh-huh. if you're going to do a sauce, Jen Ira, J-E-N-I-R-A dot com. Uh-huh. The hands down best barbecue sauce in the world in a bottle. GenIra.com barbecue sauce. Order the mild, the medium, and the hot. And Lord have mercy, prepare yourself for the best barbecue (laughs) you've ever had. I'm telling you right now. About to get an endorsement. (laughs) It's better than Williams Brothers. And I thought that was better than Sweet Baby All right, one last one. One last one. Spades or Domino's? Spades or Domino's? Oh, either one. You can get hurt. Spades. Oh, you got to go Spades because more, more, more black people play Spades. When the ladies play more. But there's some Lady Domino's now. There's some Lady Domino's. Beat All right. Ass. We'll be back in 49 minutes after the hour to close out the show and our last break of the day right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. There's a ton of stuff they don't want you to know. Does the U.S. government really have alien technology? And what about the future of artificial intelligence, AI? What happens when computers learn to think? Could there be a serial killer in your town? From UFOs to psychic powers and government cover-ups, from unsolved crimes to the bleeding edge of science, history is riddled with unexplained events. We spent a decade applying critical thinking to some of the most bizarre phenomena in civilization and be Each week, we dive deep into unsolved mysteries, conspiracy theories, and actual conspiracies. You've heard about these things, but what's the full story? Listen to Stuff They Don't Want You to Know on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you find your favorite shows. All right, guys, here we are, our last break of the day and of the week. Remember, you can always catch the Steve Harvey Morning Show on demand on the free iHeartRadio app. And of course, it's time for your closing remarks. Um, you know something? I was having a uh, conversation uh, yesterday with an employee of mine. And, um, and you know, I was debating on whether I was going to share this with you or not. Uh, but 
you know, it it is what it is. I just, uh, I oftentimes I wonder, and you may be wondering the same thing, why your life has so many bends in it, so many peaks and valleys and curves and angles. And uh, well, you know, Steve Harvey is just like everybody else's life. <laughs> Yours ain't gonna be no different. Uh, it's just, you know, all of us are at different levels, but it the bend is the bend, the peak is the peak, and the valley is the valley. No matter how high your peak is, if I'm on my highest peak, that's the highest point in life I'm aware of, that's my peak. I was talking with an employee, and he had a friend with him, and he was up taking a tour of the lot and stuff. And he stood there and he said, wow, oh man, Steve Harvey, man, I've always wanted to meet you, man. It's such a, such an honor, sir. He's a young guy, about 24, real respectful. He said, it's such an honor to meet you, sir. Man, man, I wish my mom could see me talking to you. I said, that's good, man. I said, let's take a picture, man, so your mom know you was with me. Oh man, would you? So I said, yeah, so I took a picture with him. He said, Mr. Harvey, can I ask you something, man? I mean, you seem like you real cool. I said, man, I was just joking with him. I said, man, I've been cool my whole life. I said, I'm just really, really a cool person. He said, yeah, you are. He said, man, you ain't nothing like what people say you are. And I said, yeah, I know, man, I hear that a lot. I said, people who know me, they know me. The people who don't know me, they don't know me. He said, Mr. Harvey, how do you deal with that? How do you let all these people just say all the things they saying about you. And I want to not say this for me, but I want to say this to all of you, for all of you out there who experience haters on whatever level your life is, because we all got them. All you got to do is be about something. And here they come. All you got to do is try to improve your, your lot in life. And here they come. All you got to do is want more on your job than what everybody else, and here they come. All you got to do is get in a relationship that they don't have, and here they come. All you got to do is put in for the promotion that they know they ain't even qualified for, but you put it in, and all of a sudden, here they come. The reasons for haters can go on and on and on, but the young man asked me, said, how do you deal with that? I said, because listen to me. If a person, Martin Luther King said, a person can't ride your back unless you bend over. I refuse to bend over. Why? Why would I? I said, and another thing, young man, these people, and it's not that many from my standpoint. It may be, man, they just be talking about you. But really, in the total scheme of things, y'all, your haters ain't that many. It's that they just loud. They just loud. Hate is louder than love. But who you are, what God has done for you, where God is taking you, what God provides with you is way bigger than a couple of notes from some haters who don't even have the courage to share their name with you because they got a fake page. They don't even have the, the, the guts to put their picture on it. They just a name. So I said, young man, I said, it don't really phase me that way. I said, I don't give anybody that much power over me. I said, how would I allow these people to break me when these people didn't make me? He said, wow, man, you really feel that way. He said, man, because I was expecting to meet you and I thought you was going to be down and depressed because, you know, a lot of stuff been happening, man, that whole thing with, he was just saying all that stuff. And, and now, man, you the people don't, don't, don't want to hear what you got to say about sleeping. He says, so Mr. Harvey, let me ask you this. Do you really think you can't get rich sleeping eight hours? I said, well, son, l l let me help you understand something. He said, he said, but Mr. Harvey, they say, <laughs> this one was funny. He said, Mr. Harvey, they say that you rather choose wealth over health. I said, no, I'd rather be healthy any day. But if you don't get eight hours, you're not going to be healthy, Mr. Harvey. I said, son, I know a lot of people that sleep eight hours and they sick. I said, so son, listen to me, man. Don't don't let people shape your mind with 30 second sound base. 
bites. I said, you can go get all the sleep you want. I said, you can sleep eight hours. You can sleep 10 hours. I said, man, go on and do you. I said, but if you could get rich like that, I said, man, just write a book because it would help a lot of people. He said, but Mr. Harvey, somebody said, Oprah Winfrey said she get eight hours sleep. I said, well, son, Oprah Winfrey ain't rich. Oprah Winfrey's not rich. She's wealthy. She got money coming in while she sleep. For those of us that are rich, that are in the constant grind and hustle to remain rich, because rich is as fleeting as it is, as it, as it, as it is, as you spend it. I said, it just takes a little bit longer, son. I said, hey, man, don't let a lot of people shape who you are. Get focused on who you are. Put your faith in God and know who you are and go on about your business. Because in this world we live in today, a lot of small-minded people got a whole lot of opinions. And it's just a bunch of them. But don't worry about it. Do you. Trust in God and stay you. He said, man, Mr. Harvey, I'm going to do that. I said, cool, because I'm going to do the same. Just wanted to get that to y'all in case you got some haters in your life. And I'm sure you do. Have yourself a great weekend, okay? For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit SteveHarveyFM.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So there is a ton of stuff they don't want you to know. Yeah, like does the U.S. government really have alien technology? Or what about the future of AI? What happens when computers actually learn to think? Could there be a serial killer in your town? From UFOs to psychic powers and government cover-ups, from unsolved crimes to the bleeding edge of science, history is riddled with unexplained events. Listen to Stuff They Don't Want You to Know on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you find your favorite shows. What's up, y'all? I'm Brian Ford, artisan baker and host of the new podcast, Flaky Biscuit. I'm going to help y'all learn how to cook and bake new things as we get to know our guests through their favorite nostalgic meal. If you are ever at a place in your life where things are too busy or your head gets too big, having a meal like this, it reminds you of who you were and also who you still are. Listen to Flaky Biscuit every Tuesday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to The Good Stuff. I'm Jacob Schick, a third-generation combat Marine. And I'm his co-host and wife, Ashley Schick. We believe everyone has a story to tell, not only about the peaks, but the valleys they've been through to get them to where they are today. We're joined by some amazing guests who share the lessons they've learned that shaped who they are and what they're doing to pay it forward and give back. Listen to The Good Stuff on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Lies, exploitation, and the American dream turned nightmare. This is Big Sugar, a deep dive into the inner workings of the sugar industry. I'm Celeste Headley, and in a new podcast, I'm investigating a true crime story like no other about the men who risked their lives to cut sugar cane. From iHeartMedia, I'll unravel a decades-long fight to get justice. Listen to Big Sugar on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.